Luke, the eighth chapter. We're going to read verses 40 through 42, and then we're going to jump down to verses 49 through 55. The reason we're doing that is this particular passage of Scripture has a story within a story. And the verses 43 through 48 deal with the woman who touched the hem of the Lord's garment. You remember that story? Well, that story is kind of inserted in the middle of the story about Jairus. So I want to get right into the story of Jairus. I don't want to be sidelined by the little woman who touched the hem of the, uh, the Lord's garment. So what we're going to do is we're going to read Luke 8, 40 through 42, and then we're going to jump down about seven verses to verse 49 through verse 55. And I'll let you know when we jump, okay? Amen. And I'll put it on the screen for you. There you go. Those who are able, if you'll stand with us this afternoon in honor of the reading of God's Word. Amen. And the King James text today reads, Luke 8, 40 through 42. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay a-dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. We now jump down to verse 49. While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter and James and John and the father and the mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her. But he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out and took her by the hand, and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat. Amen. I want to talk to us for a little while this afternoon on the topic, Faith Beyond the Final Answer. If you'll bow your head with me a moment more. King Jesus, lover of men's souls, savior of lost mankind, we thank you, Lord, today for the wonderful presence of the Lord that we feel in the house of God today as we sing the blessed songs of the church. Won't it be wonderful there how we look forward, God, to one day being in your presence, being delivered, Lord, from the evil that men do, the wickedness of a sinful, ungodly world. Master, today we've come into the sanctuary of your church because it is in this place that we hear from the Lord and we receive nourishment for our soul. It is in this place, God, that we are strengthened so that we might go back yet another week into the world and face the trials, the troubles, the temptations, the struggles that we must face in a secular society. And God, we've come into this place today with no intention but to hear from heaven. We desire, God, a word from the Lord that is able to strengthen us, encourage us, lift us up this hour, to give us the strength to face yet another day. Master, in the name of Jesus, we loose the anointing of the Holy Ghost in the house of God today. 
We ask, Lord, that you would touch the speaker and the hearer. Don't touch me only, but touch as well every hearer, those in this building, those who would listen and watch by reason of the internet. Let them too feel the anointing of God, which confirms that which they hear as a word from the Lord. Master, today, set us free by your truth, for you promised you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Grant it this hour, O God, for we ask it in Jesus, Jesus, Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Praise God and amen. You may be seated today. Praise God. Amen. Faith beyond the final answer. Jairus was a ruler of the Jews. Some people think that uh, the Lord didn't have any devout Jewish followers, but he did. You see, you make a big mistake if you think the only people who followed the Lord and believed on the Lord were people who didn't know the Bible very well and people who didn't know the Old Testament law and the Old Testament prophets very well. No, there were people in the a Jewish faith who understood, Martin, every prophecy of Scripture. They understood all the rules and regulations of the law, and they understood exactly what God had promised concerning a Messiah. And when Jesus came, they believed him to be the Messiah. So this notion that, well, you know, the only Jewish people, because there are some Jewish folk in the world who will try to tell you that. They'll try to tell you, well, if, if, if those people in the early centuries had really understood, you know, the, the uh, prophecies, if they had really understood things, they wouldn't have believed on Jesus. Uh, yeah, there were quite a few who did. If you remember Nicodemus who came to the Lord in the middle of the night and asked him, what must I do? And, uh, if, and the Lord talked to him about being born again. Nicodemus was also a devout uh, leader of the Jew in the Jewish faith. So there were a lot of people who understood very, very well what the prophecies of Scripture said. And they believed on the Lord. Well, Jairus had only one daughter. He had one child. And Jairus' daughter lay very, very ill, and he knew where his hope lay. He knew where he could find help. And he ran to Jesus, and he sought the Lord if he would come back to his house, and if he would touch his daughter so that his daughter might be well. Boy, I'm going to tell you, it amazes me how many Christians in the church today do not know where their help comes from. When trouble comes... God is the last person they talk to. When trouble comes, prayer is the last thing they think of. They're too busy looking to the doctors. They're too busy looking to the lawyers. They're too busy looking to the judges. They're too busy looking to people whom they believe are able to change their circumstance in a positive way. But you know, when you don't have all these things available to you, you're much more inclined to turn to God. And back in biblical times, Martin, they didn't have medicine like we have today. They didn't have hospitals. They didn't have doctors. They didn't have specialists like we have today. So when someone fell deathly ill, they really didn't have a lot of choices. They didn't have a lot of options. One of the best things that could happen to the church today is, and some of y'all are going to say, I can't believe the preacher said that. One of the best options that could happen in the church today is if our options were cut off. If all of a sudden we didn't have medical science, Johnny, that we could run to. If all of a sudden we didn't have the scientists that we could run to. If all of a sudden we didn't have the hospitals and the specialists and the doctors that we could run to. You say, Pastor, well, that's terrible. Why would you say that? Now, how many of y'all had a little twinge of fear strike up in you when I said that? And you thought, oh, that would be terrible not to have any. No, it wouldn't. Because then you would turn to God. 
then you would turn to God because you would know that he's your only option at that point. He's not an option, he's the option. You follow what I'm saying? I've known a number of preachers. I've got friends in ministry who have gone to foreign lands down in Africa and places like this, and they've preached, and they have seen some of the most remarkable miracles you have ever seen in your life. They have seen God open deaf ears. They've seen God open blind eyes. They have seen the dead raised. They have seen things that we in America do not see. You know why? Because down there, the people they're preaching to don't have the options that we have. So they don't put their faith in things that we put our faith in. No, the only place they can put their faith is in God. So when they have a situation, a sickness, a disease, uh, someone is dying, when they have a situation that is so great, Martin, the first thing they think is, I need to go to the church. I need to get the saints of God praying. I need the pastor to anoint my loved one with oil and pray for him. That's how their minds work, and that's how their faith works. Jairus' daughter was very, very ill, and it was obvious to all that she was on her last leg, so to speak, that she was dying. And Jairus went quickly to get the Lord, and as he's trying to bring the Lord back to his home, they're interrupted by this little experience with a woman who crawled through the crowd and grabbed hold of the hem of the Lord's garment. And the Lord, of course, stopped and said, Who touched me? And all that dialogue went on between his disciples and himself. And finally, the Lord spoke to that little woman and said, Don't be afraid. Don't worry. Your faith has made you whole. Again, there was a lady who had no options. The Bible said she had spent all her living, Martin, uh, after doctors. She had spent as much money as she had trying to get doctors to help her and run out of money. Had no more money. Her options were down to zero. And yet she knew in her mind, the Bible said, she told herself, if I can but touch the hem of this garment. So as the Lord is traveling back to Jairus' house, there's a little interruption. He gets held up for a few minutes because of this little woman. And then as they're just about to leave and finish their journey to Jairus' house, a servant of Jairus comes quickly and says, Sir, you needn't bother the Lord any further. Your daughter is dead. Oh my, the final answer, the final word. She's dead. That's supposed to tell me then that there is no hope. That's supposed to tell me then that there is no further need to bother the Lord. Am I telling the truth? Amen. But Jesus looks at Jairus and says, Hey, you know what? <laughs> Don't sweat this. Let's just finish our journey. Let's just keep going. Don't let this trouble you. If you can believe me to heal her, then just keep believing me. See, that's the problem with us. A lot of times we, we receive a final answer and that is where our faith stops. We receive a word from somebody. We receive an answer from somebody. And Martin, we become convinced that that is the final word. And it is at hearing that final word that Bill, all of a sudden our faith just drops off the edge of the planet. We stop believing. Okay, no sense to bother the Lord any further. I remember seeing a story on television about a family who had gathered together because a loved one of theirs, a, an older black man, uh, was very ill in the hospital. And he was in bad shape. And they did, they did, doctors did not believe he would survive. And then all of a sudden, the man passes. And they tried and they tried and they tried to revive him, but he could not be revived. And these people, the family had gathered out in the waiting area, you know, and they were praying. They were holding hands and they were praying for this gentleman. And the doctor comes out and says, I'm sorry, but your loved one has died. We did everything we could and he's gone. We pulled the sheet over his head. It's done. It's over. The heart monitor's been turned off. There is nothing more that can be done. Is that your final answer? You remember the 
TV show, Who Wants to Be Made? Is that your final doctor? Is that your final answer? Yep, that's my final answer. And that means it's the final word. Nobody, nowhere, no how can supersede what I'm telling you. <laughs> you don't know my God. And this family said, okay. And then they bowed their heads and they grabbed hold of their hands and they just kept praying. They didn't quit praying. Their faith didn't stop at the final answer. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? No, their faith kept marching. <laughs> they said, Lord, that's all right. We were praying for you to heal him, but now he doesn't need a healing anymore. Now we need a resurrection. Now we need him to be brought back to life. And they literally began to pray for this man that God would restore his life. And after a few moments of prayer, take a wild guess of what happened. All of a sudden, that man's heart began to beat. All of a sudden, his toes began to move. All of a sudden, his eyes began to flutter. And the nurse about had a stroke because, after all, her faith stopped at the final answer. Her faith stopped at what the doctor had to say. That was the final word. Am I telling the truth? Oh, but the families didn't. And they prayed that man through to a miracle until his body was brought back to life by the power of God. I've seen a number of stories on that line. It's not that it, you'd be surprised. That's happened a lot more than you can imagine, folks. If you can believe past the final answer. You see, my final answer only comes from the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. If I haven't heard from heaven, I haven't heard. That's as easy as, that's as far as it goes. If God hasn't spoken, then you shouldn't quit believing. Until God has spoken, until the Lord has delivered the final amen, our faith should continue. It doesn't matter what our circumstance looks like. It doesn't matter how dire and how negative and how horrible things look. It doesn't matter what naysayers say. It doesn't matter what the political pundits say. It doesn't matter what the politicians say. It doesn't matter what your banker says or what your lawyer says or what the doctor says your faith should proceed beyond the final answer hallelujah my lord have mercy when I lay in the hospital in 2000 they told me I had 24 hours at best to live now I'm going to tell you if they're being generous they will tell you you've got six months that when, when the doctor, I have a cousin who's a physician, and she told me, she said, when a doctor says, you know, we give them six months or so to live, she said, that is code, literally. She said, that is code, and that means any day. It literally means any day. She said, but they teach us, you don't want to just tell people, you know, any day now, it's going to happen any minute now. So you tell them, well, you know, it could be six months. Kind of to let them have just a little spark of hope that continues. But when they say you've got 24 hours to live, honey, I got news for you. That is the final answer. They're not expecting any turnaround. They're not expecting any change. They're not expecting anything to happen any differently. And they kept telling my mother and my grandparents and my, my family, you know, he has 24 hours to live. And the next morning, I was still there. And then they'd say, well, we're pretty sure he's not going to survive another 24 hours. And the next morning, I was there. Well, he made two days, but he'll never make three. The next morning, I was there. You see, folks, I'm going to tell you, we miss out on a lot of miracles. We don't realize sometimes the miracles that we're experiencing along the way. The fact that I was continuing to live when I should have died was a miracle in and of itself. If I'd have lived 30 days and died, my family would still have seen a miracle. Do you follow what I'm saying? Because how in the world, when you've got the final answer, how in the world is it that somebody can go 30 days? I've had doctors tell me stuff that was supposed to mean I'd be dead inside of a year, or I'd be dead inside of a, a certain amount of time, and you know what? I'm still here. You know why? Because my faith goes beyond the final answer. 
When I looked at that doctor and I said, is that your final answer? He says, yes. I said, okay. No problem. I'm like Jairus. Say, no, I come to the Lord looking to, for him to heal my daughter. But you know what? If he can heal her, he can raise her. Hallelujah. If he can heal her, he can raise her. My God, friend, don't you know? If God can do one, he can do the other. If God can take care of it when it's bad, trust me. He can take care of it when it gets worse. Don't ever quit believing. Don't ever quit trusting. Don't ever quit looking to God for the answer, for the miracle that you need just because someone has delivered to you the final answer. It sounds final. The only problem is it didn't come from God's mouth. Hello now. If it hadn't come from God's mouth, then it may be man's final answer, but it's not the believer's final answer. My Lord, have mercy. You see, we're supposed to, the Bible said, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So why in the world are people who are led by the Spirit of God getting their final answers from people rather than from God? Hello now. I remember one night, I was about, I think I was probably about 12 years old or so came home from school and my mother was upset and she said Harlan, your uncle Harlan is in the hospital. He had Hodgkin's disease. Harlan lived seven years with Hodgkin's disease. The doctors, and mind you, was on no chemotherapy and was on no treatment. He would not take any treatment. He lived seven years. The doctor told my aunt, he said, uh, this man should have been dead inside of a year, but he lived seven years with Hodgkin's disease without any treatment, without any chemotherapy. You see, we, we lose sight of the fact we saw a miracle. We saw a miracle. There was a great miracle took place there. Somebody lived seven years, wasn't supposed to live a year. But my mother told me one night I came in, she said, Harlan's in the hospital. The doctors are telling Allison that tonight is probably the night. He will never leave the hospital except in a body bag or in a hearse one. And so I remember going to my bedroom and I shut the bedroom door and I knelt down. Harlan had four children and a wife and his wife was under 30 years of age. His oldest child wasn't even eight years old yet. And I got down on my knees and I began to cry out to God. And I said, Lord, that's what the doctors are saying. But I hadn't heard from you yet. <laughs> Hallelujah. I hear what the doctors are saying. But my faith goes beyond the final answer. Hallelujah. And I began to cry out to God. I mean to tell you, I got to praying in the Holy Ghost. I got to praying. I did me some shouting. I had a good time. I heard my father come in. Didn't even care. <laughs> Normally, that would have shut things down in a flat flash. I didn't even care. I was deep in prayer. I was praying and I was interceding for my Uncle Harlan. Got news for you. Harlan come out of that hospital. He lived well beyond that evening. Amen. I can't remember how long, a year or so, I think. Uh, but he came out of that hospital. You see, folks, we've got to understand that as children of God, we are not merely called to have faith to a point. But we're called to have faith beyond that point. T too many believers get that word. And they hear from the servant like Jairus did. And immediately their faith stops. Immediately all hope is gone. Immediately they figure, oh well, I've got my final answer, so there's no need to bother the Lord any further. But Jairus heard from the Lord. You see, he was still talking. The Lord said, no, 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 let's finish our journey. Let's keep going. If you can believe, <laughs> don't worry about this. This will be all right. He gets to the house and he walks in the house and the Lord would only allow Peter, James, and John and the, the uh, girl's parents into the room. I'm going to tell you something, folks. You want to be careful who you pray with. You want to 
to be careful who you pray with. The word of God said that if two or three shall agree as touching any one thing, it shall be done unto them of our Father which is in heaven. God works through faith. And I'm going to tell you, I know people who can pray, but I also know people who can pray that can't believe God for nothing. They can talk. They can voice the words. But I know them. I watch their life. I, I watch the way they live. I watch the way they do things. And I'm going to tell you a little secret. I don't see any faith. My grandmother, bless her heart. I love my grandmother. You know, I, my mother's mother. I love her to death. She's passed on now. But I'm going to tell you something. I did not have a lot of confidence in my grandmother's faith. Because my grandmother was constantly fearful. She was constantly afraid. She constantly believed the final answer that was delivered by any man on this planet, whether it be a scientist, whether it be a doctor, whether it be a judge, an attorney, whoever, policeman, she believed that final answer that came from men. And I would look at her and I would say to her, Grandma, what in the world is wrong with you? God hasn't spoken. You haven't heard from the Lord. You haven't heard a final answer yet. All you've heard is a eh, man's opinion on the issue. And she'd get mad at me, of course, you know. The people don't like their faith to be challenged. I'm going to tell you, we've had people sit in this church who wanted me to have prayer meetings all the time with them. Oh, we should have a prayer meeting. We should have a prayer meeting. We should have... I got news for you. I watched the way that person lived their life. I listened to what that person said. I saw where they got their final answers from. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? And you know what, Lisa? I had no interest in praying with them. No, Jesus took Peter, James, and John and the parents. He didn't take all 12 of his disciples. I'm going to tell you something. Just because somebody in the church don't mean they're loaded up with faith and they can believe God for everything. I won't tell you, if we had a church today with 300 people, you would know who the prayer warriors are. You would know who the people are in that congregation who are full of faith and who can believe God past the final answer. You get to know those people. You get to identify those people. You get to the point where you recognize by the way they walk and the way they talk and the way they live, you get to recognize the people who have the faith that goes beyond the final answer. And when you need somebody to help you pray, Lisa, guess who you run to? You run to Sister Dow. You know why? Because Sister Dow can believe past the final answer. Hallelujah. You run to Brother Gillum. Why? Because Brother Gillum can believe past the final answer. Do you know what I'm telling you today? Oh, I'm going to tell you, be careful who you pray with. Be careful who you bring into the room with you. Because sometimes you'll bring in the wrong person, and they're so full of unbelief that they'll cancel out your belief. Literally. They'll bring in a spirit of unbelief with them, and they'll shut down anything God's trying to do. Be careful who you engage in prayer with. Get hold of people who have the ability to believe God. And the Bible tells us that as the Lord was about to go into the room, he turned to all the mourners, and he said, What are y'all crying about? I said, This girl isn't dead. She's only sleeping. And the Word of God said, Oh, everybody in the room started laughing. Oh, they started laughing. You know why they started laughing? Because they knew she was dead. <laughs> really? You know that, huh? You know that. But what you don't know is God just told you that what you see is dead, he sees as sleeping. Hallelujah! Did you hear what I told you? What you see as dead, he sees as sleeping. Oh, they knew she was dead. Well, they were right. He said she was sleeping. I got news for you. He was right too. The difference is they were both looking at it from two different perspectives. They had taken the final answer from the doctor. The doctor checked her pulse. The doctor checked her breathing. The doctor put his ear against her her chest to hear if her heart was beating and he determined no oh, final answer she's gone what was the lord's final answer she's not dead she's sleeping <laughs> remember what i said about 
You might hear a final answer from man, but you hadn't heard a final answer from God. Well, there was the Lord's final answer. He said, she's not dead. She's sleeping. Hallelujah. Oh, guess what? There's still hope in there. If all she's doing is sleeping, and you know what I love? He didn't say she's not dead. She just said, he didn't put her back in a sick state. He didn't bring her back to life, so to speak, and put her in a state of sickness. No, no, no. He, he said, no, she's not dead. She's sleeping. In other words, it's not even as bad as it was before she died. As far as God's concerned, this situation isn't even as bad as it was before she died. It isn't even as bad as when she got sick. And when she was laying on that bed dying. You no, know, as far as God's concerned, she's taking a nap. All we got to do is wake her up. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, I want to tell you today, folks. God has given us the ability by his word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Why do I preach messages like this? Because I'm trying to encourage your faith. How many of us sit in fear? How many of us are terrified? How many of us are immediately stopped in our tracks because of something that this pundit says on television or something that this politician says or something that this doctor has told us or something that this other man has told us? God's called us to believe him beyond the final answer. In Matthew 15 verses 21 through 28. Then Jesus went thence. And departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold a woman of Canaan came out of the same coasts. And cried unto him saying. Have mercy on me O Lord thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But, she, but he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very Hour. Now here's a woman who could believe beyond the final answer. Here's a woman who had faith beyond the final answer. But the only difference is this time she was dealing with the Lord. And every answer she appeared to receive from the Lord, she just kept believing beyond that. She kept, oh my Lord, I'm going to tell you, there are times when it seems like God has given you a different answer. There are times that we pray, Martin, and we feel like God isn't hearing me. He's not, he's not listening to me. This woman was seeking the Lord's help, and the Word of God said he answered her not a word. How many times have you gone to the Lord in prayer over a certain matter, and you say, Lord, you must be ignoring me because you're sure not hearing me. I don't see any change. You're not responding. I'm not hearing anything from heaven. And then after a while, all of a sudden, the Lord get, comes back to us, and he speaks to us all right, but he speaks a word that would almost seem to discourage us from continuing to pray. I've heard people, I, I've had people in this very church, well, I've got this issue in my body, and bless God, you know, the Lord told me years ago that I shouldn't do this, and I did it anyway, and then this happened to me, and now, bless the Lord, I've been living with this pain and this agony for all these years because the Lord told me not to do that, but I did it anyway. Got news for you, friend. If you can believe, that's the final answer when the Lord says, oh no, I'm not going to help you because. Hello now. The Lord said to this woman, I'm not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. She was not a Jew. She didn't qualify. The Lord was basically saying to her, I can't help you. 
I can't help you. But you know what? She believed past the final answer. Even when that answer was coming from the Lord. Even when you think God is telling you no. Even when you think the Lord has said, no, I don't want to do that. I'm not going to do that. When I was in the hospital in 2000, before I ever went in the hospital and was lying there dying, Johnny, I went for a year and a half dealing with an uh, uh, intestinal issue. I didn't know until much later it was a parasite. But I would eat something, and literally about 15 minutes later, it came out of me. Literally. And it came out just the way it went in. I chewed it, and that's it. It came out. My body, my entire intestine, the lining of your intestine literally becomes coated so that you cannot absorb any of the nutrition, and it does not uh, digest the food. It was terrible. I was in a mess. And I kept praying, Lord, I need you to heal me. Lord, I need you to heal me. Lord, I need you to heal me. Lord, I, for a year and a half I prayed, Lord, I need you to heal me. Guess what? He didn't heal me. He did not heal me. I finally got to the point, Martin, where I told my mother, I said, I, Mom, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know if I'm going to live to see my 35th birthday or not. She said, don't say that. I said, I'm serious. I'm very serious. I said, I've been praying for the Lord to heal me, and he just hadn't done it. What was I doing? I was buying into. I have not been sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I was buying into silence as being a final answer from God. I was buying into, I, I'm, no, I'm not going to do that for you as being God's final answer. Uh-oh, big mistake. You don't ever want to do that. You don't ever want to do that. Because you know what? Sometimes, Martin, the only way you can get your muscles built up, if you want to look like a bodybuilder, if you want to be strong and vibrant, you have to push against resistance. Am I telling the truth? You can't go to a, you can't go to a McDonald's, take a straw and go, one, two, three, for, and expect your muscles are going to grow. No, 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 no. You got to go to the gym, get something that's got some weight on it, right? Something that's going to provide resistance. Something that as you're pushing up, gravity is forcing it to push back. Sometimes God will try to help us develop our faith and grow our faith by offering resistance. That's what he was doing to that little lady. He wasn't telling her, I'm not going to help you. He didn't care if she was a Jew or not. He wasn't saying, I'm not going to help you by being silent. No, he was offering resistance. He wanted to see if she pushed back, if she would push through, if she could believe past what she perceived as the final answer. I thought I'd received the final answer from the Lord. I thought for sure that the final answer was, no, I'm not going to heal you. But then Brother Ronnie and his church got around a prayer cloth, anointed it and prayed over it, and sent it to me. And the minute I took that prayer cloth out of that envelope, I said, uh-oh. Uh-oh, somebody's praying for a miracle for me. And according to the promise of God's word, if I will join my faith with their faith, God's going to do this thing. So I said, all right, Lord, let's get this done. Done. Guess what happened, Martin? That prayer cloth helped me to believe past the final answer. You say, why do we send prayer cloths? Why do we anoint hankies, uh, handkerchiefs and send them out to people? Because sometimes, Johnny, that prayer cloth is a reminder. You have hope and help beyond what you perceive as the final answer. You're helping to encourage that person's faith by sending them a representation of your faith. Do you follow what I'm telling you? That is what happened. The minute I got that prayer cloth, my faith was renewed. The minute I got that prayer cloth, I turned my faith right back on again. And I said, okay, then apparently my, what I perceived as a no was not a no. It was just a, hold on, i got something bigger to do. See, I don't want to heal you while you're sick because that would only be a minor miracle. I'd rather heal you while you're dying because that would be a major miracle. Hello now. Amen. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I'm going to give you a testimony that few people have. And I thought, yeah, thank you, Lord. 
I told Tommy, I said, I'll tell you, I, I really, I hate to even talk sometimes about the miracle that God gave me in 2000 because I cannot for the life of me convey to you how wonderful it was and, and what an amazing thing it was. You would have had to have been there. You would have had to have seen it. You would have had to have seen me laying in a hospital bed with hoses from every single orifice I had with, you know, uh, tubes and with uh, sensors and with life support uh, inserted. You would have had to have seen me at 135 pounds lying on that bed could put my legs together so my ankles touched and there was literally no flesh between my, my thighs. There was a big gap right down between my legs. That's how skinny I was. And God gave me a miracle. Why? Because I found faith beyond the final answer. Even when you think you've heard a final answer from God, there's nothing wrong with keep believing. Even when you think the Lord has spoken, keep believing. Hallelujah. Lastly today, you've heard the story in John chapter 11 of Lazarus. Lazarus was ill and again the Lord is going to Lazarus. And by the time he gets there, Lazarus has already died. Not only has he died, but he's been in the grave for three days. My goodness. Final answer. This ain't going to happen. <laughs> no, this one's done. We've gone beyond the funeral, honey. We've done buried him. So now this one's finished. The Lord speaks to Mary and Martha and says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me shall not die, but shall live. Say, Do you believe this? Oh, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you're the Messiah. I believe you're the one that is to come. That's not what I asked you. That's not what I asked you. I'm asking you, can you believe past the final answer? Can you believe past what you perceive to be the point of no return? Can you believe me in spite of the fact that all circumstances appear to say nothing good is going to come out of this? And you know something? When people cannot believe God, it saddens him. The only place in Scripture where we see the words, Jesus wept. He stood there at that grave and he looked at all the mourners and all he saw was a sea of unbelief. Everybody there thought that the final word had been spoken. Again, they forgot that the only one who has the final word is the one who was standing right in front of them. How many of us forget that? How many of us forget that, no, God has the final word, not man, no man. I don't care how dire the service, I don't care how bloody messed up our country looks right now, I don't care how bad our government looks right now, I don't care how crooked and evil and wicked and foul and vile the leader of this nation is right now. Guess what? Till God speaks, we hadn't heard the final answer. And I'm just going to keep believing God beyond this apparent final answer. Do you follow what I'm telling you? I'm just going to keep believing God. He's going to do something about something some way. I don't know when. I don't know how. I don't know what he's going to do because it's not my business to know. It's my business to trust him. It's my business to have faith in him. The word of God tells us, for without faith, it is impossible to please him. You cannot please God if you are not operating from a place of faith. And God is not looking for a people today who can believe him to a point. He's looking for people who have faith beyond that point. Faith beyond the final answer. Hallelujah. Would you stand with me this afternoon?